Welcome. In this lecture, we would be focusing on the digital developments across India, specifically the rural India and how it has developed through Kurukshetra December edition. Now, the first thing that we would discuss here is the digital gap. As we have seen that in the last 10 years, there have been various potentials for economic, social and uh, political developments and for that, digital divide should be reduced. So, to bring in the less skilled people in the mainstream, we have to reduce this digital divide and for that, necessary rules regulations providing digital literacy are some of the important aspects that must be covered coming on next is to have this possible infrastructure is must so how do we build infrastructure bharat net is one of the uh, methods through which uh, optic fiber networking across the rural areas have been laid down internet technologies have been brought into the rural areas to alter the social and the economic condition more internet knowledge, better penetration, cheaper internet are some of the important elements that have taken into account and have brought a significant change. Now again, as I said, uh, when we have cheaper internet, that means the internet becomes affordable. So uh, currently, mobile internet signal is found only in for 7% of the world population. So definitely, we need to increase it. Now to increase this and make it affordable, there have to be certain important things. One is the related infrastructure must be developed. The second is how do you measure how many people have access to this uh, internet penetration? What is the pricing for this internet and whether this brings in digital inclusion or not? So when we talk about digital India, uh, we are reducing the distance between the government, the normal population and bringing in uh, or reducing this digital divide or digital gap. And there are various initiatives related to it. For example, there are common service centers, e-districts, digi-lockers, COVID app uh, during the time of vaccination, MyGov, Meri Pehchan, direct benefit transfer schemes which bring in direct uh, amount to your bank accounts, removing the need for intermediaries, Diksha portal for education and teachers training are some of the important ones. Now, when you are using internet, password and safety of the password becomes another important aspect. So, making the password unique, two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication means you enter the password, you receive a OTP on mobile and you enter that OTP as well. That means two devices are required. One is the knowledge of the password, the second is the knowledge of the mobile phone and the OTP on the mobile phone. The next is the length of the password, the special characters being used, changing them periodically, not sharing it uh, uh, with different people all and also not using it on different um, <clears throat> systems or uh, systems without um, uh, antiviruses now moves in the data governance so first is the open governance data which exchange information about non-personal data there are more than 12,800 catalogs for the same API Setu has been created to make data interchangeable across various systems. There are more than 200, 2000 plus APIs which have been developed. METI uh, has talked about a draft national data governance framework policy, which is again a very, very important initiative. E-governance and the shift in the e-governance is important. So how we are preventing the hazards of digital divide and bringing in better connectivity. Uh, post offices services are now available at doorsteps. Uh, doorstep that means uh, we have this um, uh, IPP, uh, IPPB app uh, which is an application by India Post Payment Banks and that could be installed on your phone through which the transactions could be done uh, from your bank account. You can transfer the money, you can bring in the money. Similarly, we also have had handheld darpan devices and smartphones which render multiple services to people in the rural area. So darpan is a device which is handheld, has a biometric scanner made in India and is basically a Bluetooth thermal printer which is attached to it. So biometrics could be done by the postmaster itself. So IPPB, as we said, uh, which is the India Post Payment Bank started in 2018 is important. Under this, we have nearly 48% accounts for women. 90% of those are opened by women at their home. And so far, nearly 2.36 crore transactions have occurred through this. Aadhaar authentication is another important aspect of this. So IT Modernization 2.0 project is another important project. This has been approved for five years. 
with the term of finance commission and here the post uh, india post would not only upgrade the van which is a wide area network but also bring in mi micro service based platforms so this fee the main features of this it 2.0 project is to provide a good ecosystem to have uh, open platforms bring in every schemes which are important and for priority for individual uh, bringing in last mile connectivity to the people by using mobile devices developing artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, through which faster delivery can take place now for education there are various uh, technologies and platforms so usi udi SE which is the unified district information systems for education is integrated with the DISC for elementary and secondary education and it forms one of the largest management information systems for school platforms performance grading index has been done to understand the transformational changes in the states and the union territories online survey plat platform for national curriculum framework has been brought which has brought education uh, or which has made education more experiential holistic integrated uh, learner centered and flexible so there is always a bottom up approach which is important NDR and Prabhan. NDR is the National Digital Education Architecture, which facilitates or has been laid down under the new education policy to, to bring in digital infrastructure for innovation in education system. Prabhan is project appraisal, budgeting, achievement, and data handling systems launched by Department of School Education and Literacy. And this talks about the active users in the school and brings in and enhance the efficiencies. Now, the next is mobile governance so umang app is one of the common apps which we have discussed in the previous lectures as well it is a unified common app uh, which has various platforms within this app which can be brought and then there are various mobile apps for example gst rate finder m aadhar m passport and so on so uh, mobile seva is another important platform which is uh, used on the various devices and this actually provides in service delivery information and uh, the various uh, platforms for the same digi locker is where you can have all the records stored at one place so it can be your doctor's prescription it could be your driving license vaccination reports hospital information uh, all these under uh, so all things related to health under ayushman bharat digital record but other things could also be uploaded on your digi locker for example your educational mark sheets then there are four m2m um, models or m governance models which is government to citizen government to employee government to government and government to business so all these four models are extremely important but we do have certain challenges which talk about the fact that the smartphones are not accessible and available affordable for everyone there is limited awareness and readiness uh, many of us are not independently working also e-governance in the field of tourism is important so in the field of tourism first important development is fast tag which has made the toll collection seamless the next is IRCTC now IRCTC is a pioneer program uh, which brings in uh, development across the railways so four levels through which this has to deal with then we have the electronic travel authorization and passport seva program now passport seva has been opened in uh, numerous areas and this has made the passport destinations very easy the national e-governance plan 2.0 initiated in 2015 has talked about the massive online open learning pro program e-hospital is another online hospital registration platform which has been brought swamitva scheme is for property smart cities for transformation and rejuvenation of the existing cities Geospatial technologies like GIS are used for smart city implementation. Accessibility of these cities have been brought. Now, uh, aviation is another important sector which supports nearly 7.5 million jobs directly or indirectly and nearly 30 billion USD uh, to India's GDP. Now, there has been eGCA which is launched, which is e-governance for civil aviation, which aims to bring in ease of doing business, better transparency and better uh, progress. So, there have been various implementations by TCS, which is the service provider and Price, uh, Pricewaterhouse Coopers Private Limited, which is the project management for the same. For travel intimidation, we have, uh, as I said, for IRCTC, it is a mini-ratna category 1 um, 
PSU which is wholly owned by the Ministry of Railway but has four segments which is internet ticketing, catering, drinking water, travel and tourism. Now besides this uh, we are also talking about a centralized rail system uh, and rail tell which are important parts of the digital ecosystem for the railways. For travel uh, we are now focusing on e-visa being provided to people coming in from various countries uh, within four days of the notice if they are coming in for recreation, tourism medical purposes. Now Ministry of External Affairs signed an agreement with the second phase of Passport Seva Kendra which limited uh, which uh, basically provided the appointments to the service providers and establishment of uh, Passport Seva Kendra in the areas where there are no at, uh, no Passport Seva Kendra at present. Now previously by, uh, by uh, 2010 we had tourist visa on arrival for Japan, Singapore, Finland, Luxembourg and New Zealand. However, now we have merged this with the electronic travel authorization and they all now fall in the category of e-visa which is for tourism, business, conference or medical, uh, medical reasons. Also, uh, we are talking about bringing in data protection protocols. Uh, the next is health service delivery. So smart, which is simple, moral, accountable, responsive and transparent governance is important. Now, a Mera Hospital initiative is to capture the feedback. TB missed call initiative is for providing counseling to TB patients. M cessation is for quitting the uh, tobacco use. National health policy focuses on variables and clouds, uh, internet of things. There are various proposals on national health stack which talks about a futuristic digital health system. The national digital health mission aims to create a management mechanism which is there. Operationalizing a single health ID uh, is again important. Using various technologies like artificial intelligence, Aroki Setu app is another important development, tele-radiology which is another important emerging area for foreign hospitals now active in this space can actually treat the patients in the region. So uh, for all this what we require is awareness, major participation, a collaborative approach and a proper governance plan which could reach the village level, the manjayat level and the district level. So various some of the e-governance portals include e-chopal, e-shakti, tara heart, e-education, e-sanjeevni, e-sweda and so on. Uh, under the rural areas, we basically focus on mobile first, employment, productivity, better usage behavior, participatory governance, e-literacy and grievance redressal. So citizens participation is important because citizen as a customer, as a owner, co-producer and a quality evaluator works together to bring in a good result. And then there are various perspectives which talk about a need for participation. Uh, what are the various levels and the tools for participation to make those effective and then there are various tools which have been given here uh, also there are various purposes for which the citizens would participate which is inform consult involve collaborate and empower now what are the benefits the benefit is once a citizen participates, it helps in a smooth functioning, uh, various individuals become a stakeholder, it develops a sense of belongingness, also improves the position for the vulnerable group, the marginalized groups and brings in long term sustainable solutions by bringing in more awareness, empowerment for the people. The next is finger millet or ragi. Now ragi is an excellent source of calcium iron, uh, helps in diabetes is actually rich in dietary fiber, gluten free and easy to digest. The new age technology talks about machine learning, blockchain and for that e-governance what we uh, basically focus on is a smart governance which talks about accountability, transparency, responsiveness, equity, uh, equitable and inclusive growth uh, following the rules and being a participatory government which is uh, some of the basic attributes of good governance and the scope of e-governance we have already told which segments do it belong to in the beginning the next is e-kranti e-kranti is a government platform which talks about transferring transforming e-governance for transforming governance that is a platform which focuses on education health farmer security justice planning financial inclusion and cyber security 
Bharati. So those are some of the most important topics that we have covered in this month's Kurukshetra. Below is the link for the complete handouts for Kurukshetra available for free on exam race and other reference material. Wish you very good luck for your preparation. Have a wonderful day ahead.